Good evening, everybody. I'll call this regular meeting to order for September the 3rd, 2024. Resolve the agenda for the September 3rd, 2024 regular meeting of the council be adopted. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Powell, Councilor Medbrook. Uh, two potential additions. One, there was a HR meeting August 19th that is not on in camera that I'd like to have an update provided to council on. And there was also an email sent to council, I believe it was August 20th, from services to seniors advocating on behalf of a senior. I'm not sure, I don't see it on the agenda. And I'm not sure because it's a specific senior, if uh, maybe that should be held in camera as well. Uh, we can add the HR, uh, uh, some pieces of that. The committee has not met with the CEO about that yet. But um, we can uh, discuss it a, a little bit in Canada, if that's fair. We're ready to do it because we have really, yeah, there's nothing really there else to, uh, we just haven't had a meeting on that yet. Uh, on the other, that uh, that was a letter that was, I guess we can talk a little bit about that in Canada as well. That's just a record, that's a, um, something that was asked by uh, a member of the committee. Um, so those can be added to the camera, Councilor Paul. Uh, just the thought that I see there's some owners of hotels here who can move the agenda from 11. I want to leave it until after 4 1. It seems to be like a lengthy meeting if you want to stay. I'm not sure that you're more than welcome to stay, but I'm just up to you, I guess. Well, it's not up to me, it's up to council to decide if they want to change the, the agenda and the order of the agenda. So, um, do we need a resolution to have, actually to have the item added to camera? I'll just change the resolution for the amended agenda. Yeah, the amended? Okay, so then I'll just reread that then. Let's deal with one thing at a time. Um, and then what about the item with the changing of the order? Uh, uh, I, with this I'll, one I'll move that and update the agenda, but if those are the three items, the HR item, service to seniors request, and the rearranging of the agenda. That's what's being proposed. That's why. Is it also a protocol of expectation for us to we asked to change the agenda, add to the agenda, that it should be in the time for these, uh, our executive to get it on the agenda, uh, not no. to do that at the meeting. It can be done at the time of when the adoption for the agenda has been done. So uh, to add, uh, to amend the agenda, as uh, add those two items to camera, and then to change the order of the agenda to move the item of 11.3. Um, 11. Yes to where would we move that to we would just move it to because it falls into bylaws so it's already an 11 that's the order that is unless we move all bylaws in a different order but that's against our uh, procedures bylaw so i don't think that we can change it um i do believe we're allowed to and move a section of the agenda as long as all the council is in favor. So you bump 11, you can either take the whole section or just the 11.3, I think it's the accommodation tax, and then stick it in at the top after the delegation. So 11.3 to between uh, receptions and communications? Yeah, I'll just put it in uh, at five and then just bump everything else down. So it will now be six if you update. So did you change that yet? It should be changed, yeah. Because now I have six. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then so we have uh, the adoption of the the uh, amended agenda for September the 3rd, 2024. There, if you update, the rates change. Okay. 
any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, so starting with uh, receptions of delegations and hearings, uh, we have. Oh, sorry, right. Confirmation. Thank you. Uh, result of the minutes of the August the 6th, 2024 regular uh, council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Now, four. 4.1, uh, we have the uh, delegation on the property of 346 6th Avenue South uh, with uh, Erwin and Tammy uh, Zaretsky, and Drew is here too. So you guys can come forward here. Maybe just grab another chair if you can. Yeah. So council does have information package that you did present okay. prior to this meeting. Uh, that they were able to uh, review on their own. And uh, this is an opportunity for you to speak. Again, you're going to speak for yeah. um, uh, for Drew, unless Drew yeah. is going to speak as well. That's his option. And uh, uh, this is, again, not an item for debate. Mm -hmm. uh, you can present. Council can ask some questions, or you can uh, questions can be answered, or whatever. Okay? okay. I can't guarantee that there'll be any discussion or, or decision on this tonight. Okay. But it will be something that council will look at uh, down the, in the future, okay? Okay, thank you. So carry on. Uh, introduce yourself. Uh, absolutely. Okay, um, my name is Tammy Zaretsky Danishuk, and I think I, I know most of you. I think Mr. Bobbick, I haven't, you were, I worked with Cindy, and Drew plays hockey with, with Tracy, and I had know you from uh, school or for work and I'm glad to be here I've never been here before so this is neat to be my husband Drew or Irwin yeah you've had many dealings with Irwin and Drew so uh, he's on board as a landlord with Irwin and I as well so this is a new experience for him as well for all of us so first off I'd like to thank you for having um, the meeting move from last last month to this month um, um, the information that we are about to discuss is really important and, and it's regarding Drew's property and there's lots of financial ramifications with it. So we wanted to make sure that, the, that we were in a state that we could present it to you in a, in a way that you would understand it and, and see it from our point. Um, our goal and our wish is to hope to provide you with information that you can see why we wish for the order to demolish Drew's house on 4th uh, 346 6th Avenue South and Swan River to be rescinded. Okay. Um, we wish that we will also try to point out some inconsistencies that we had seen within how things were and uh, what is, which has brought us to this unfortunate situation, which where we are right now. Okay. Um, okay. First off, I would like to ask how many of you, before you voted, you know, two months ago, actually saw the house? Can't ask the question. I can't ask the question? No. Okay. Okay, and I, to me, that would be important because um, this is to destroy a home. It, this is to destroy a house. It's not just to take something apart. It's to destroy a house. So. If I can't do that, that's okay. Uh, my hope also is that when you were voting and the way you will see things is that this is a particular house. We have had houses in the past to be demolished. It needed to. We've had fires, we had things that had happened to them that houses were, they were salvageable. So they needed to be. Uh, we've had small houses, big houses, and I just hope that, you know, you don't see the when they were Dennis Chuck home or Dennis Chuck house and it becomes a blanket statement because this is a different house. Drew had bought in this house. They had made major renovations into, into it. Flooring was changed. Cupboards were changed. He put stainless steel appliances in it because he was going to be living in it. Then we had an opportunity to look for a grandma that enjoyed, who had two grandsons that liked playing video games that they could, they, we wanted to have a house, so 
we had the opportunity to rent it to them, that's what we did. And everything was good, except COVID came, money came, and that changed uh, how things were, the lifestyle for that family, unfortunately. Um, as we have said before, we've had fires before, and knock on wood, nobody has been hurt. And I just hope that you can judge this on the merit of the house and not because of other things that have happened. Because um, we provide housing for many people and families in this community, and, and so you will have many dealings with us, okay? Uh, more so than if somebody just had one or two properties. So we hope that we can work together with you as a mayor and council to continue to provide housing for our community members. Okay, so unfortunately, July 2nd, uh, Drew was away. Um, he was uh, for employment up in the Northwest Territories. Um, we received a letter, to, that Drew got a letter to say that he had a hearing on the, the 2nd of July. He knew he was going to be away. Nothing in us thought that we needed to contact town council for Irwin to speak on them. But unfortunately, he, Drew needed to do a waiver and I spoke to Lance about it and I can certainly understand about it, except that it had big ramifications. A vote was made and Drew didn't have a chance, Irwin didn't have a chance to speak. So um, anyway, here we are today and I'm glad that we can speak. First off, we want you to know that everything that, um, we want you to know that from the time that Drew was authorized and purchased the building permit on July 24th, 19, uh, 2023, authorized by the building inspector, Ron Lewicki, we believe that it was valid and we had the understanding that it was valid for a year, for July 24th, 2024. Mr. Lewicki had told Irwin that and on your website, it says that as well. It says if you purchase a building permit, it's good for a year. So while the boys were planning on things and how they were spending their time, that's, that's what they believed. Um, as you've seen in the, build, in the engineer's building report, all, the, all of the requirements were completed by July 24, 2024, with a stamped approval of the engineer, with photos to show you that, they, that all of them had been successfully completed. The engineer had stated that the repair work found to be completed to the structure was over and above recommendations in the report. It also stated that it would be a shame to let a building in this condition to be demolished. And by the time, when you were on the day, the day, I guess, when you had made the vote to demolish it, the repairs already had been made. Like the repairs were done. And it was the day after on the, the July 3rd that the uh, engineer was able to come out. He had other uh, reasons to come to Swan River and he was able to look at the house. Um, as you notice in the letter that I had put, the next day, July 3rd, Irwin uh, was able to meet with Derek, okay, our CAO, and he was able to see the house and then he presented Irwin with a letter that was dated August 25th, 2023. That had been the first time that Irwin had seen that letter. And in that letter, it stated different reasons, different things that had happened. It stated about that the permit had been late and that unfortunately, Mr. Lewicki had erroneously approved the building permit and he shouldn't have given it to, Ir to Irwin for, or Drew. Um, and that the permit was was void, null and void, okay. So I feel that um, now that, er that the house is all repaired, we're kind of going backwards on things that would have happened, if would have happened, could have happened, should have happened, how it goes like that, okay. Um, just going to that letter, uh, we appreciate Derek's honesty. He said, should that letter have been with that had just such financial magnitude and importance to it should have been registered, it should have been. Was it? No, it wasn't. Okay, unfortunately the assistant didn't make, the, make it registered. Had we, we would have signed it, Drew would have, and different things would have happened. Had we gotten the letter, Drew would have been able to see that. He would have, if it was incomplete, do with the things that he needed to make that, that application complete. Um, and whatever else he needed to do. So that stream would have happened. Had he also known, the boys started working on the place. Um, 
a major thing that had to do had to happen was the basement the fire the fire took place in the basement there was wood there was de debris there was beds there was clothes there was a major mess in the basement that had to be cleaned it and then it had to be uh, uh, power washed and so that was something that needed to get done before even any of the repairs could be made so had drew gotten that letter he would have before he would have been starting to do that make you spending money on that they would have been they he would have been seeing what he needed to get done from Derek before he would spend the money in that um, one of the major holdups with the insurance company was that who was paying for the cleanup because it was a major expense so um, so I've spoken to you about the the engineers report and then I've spoken to you about the letter from the 25th, uh, 2023. Now I need to speak to you about a letter that you received, a phone call first that he received from Mr. Wiki. So the letter says, the permit is null and void. We weren't aware of that. We did not know that the letter was null and void. He sends his phone call, he says to Irwin, what's going on here? You know, you, what's happening with the house? You know, we need to get a report on what's happening. You gotta get it fixed up. So. Um, he or he said he wants to come and make an inspection of it so the cleaning had happened but some of the repairs hadn't so he was going to have a inspection with Mr. Lewicki and then he said let he said no I'm going to cancel it because we've got till June 24th to get it all done so that's why he canceled it okay um, seeing that Mr. Lewicki was very dissatisfied the boys went to town and got the things done that he needed to get done on the house um, by the time that he got the letter from Mr. Lewicki and the order for demolished then on the May, the repairs already had been done. Okay, um, And I guess with all that, then we have to look back. The, the permit was null and void. In the letter it says, according to, um, what did he put? Yeah, the, the letter it says, uh, quoting from Mr. Lewicki, the letter dated May 9th, 2024, he stated a building permit was issued on July 24, 2023, the proposed renovation on the above address. So he referred to this building permit as if it was valid. Okay, he requested an inspection. He was doing this on a, in a permit that was invalid. So I don't know, I think it was CC to Mr. Lewicki, I'm not sure why, why he did. He, he's not here to defend himself, but the request that he made, he shouldn't have been. It was illegal. He should not have been asking the boys information about a, about a permit that was already null and void. Um, okay, so although the permit was deemed null and void by Mr. Uh, Poole, Mr. Lewicki requested an inspection, um, all of that information. You know what, he should have been telling the boys, stop working, you do not have a valid permit. He didn't do that. He continued on asking questions. Um, he said, and then he said that the boys hadn't been, hadn't commenced in six months. Well, that wasn't true. The boys had been doing all the cleanup on that. And then he null and voided that permit again because of that, um, because it hadn't, enough work hadn't been done at that time. Um, he also in that letter stated, I said to you, uh, how does he say it? Um, you assume that, yeah, in a letter dated August 25th, 2023, I informed you that as noted in the building permit application, if the work is not commenced within six months, the permit is null and void. Again, he's referring to this being null and void again. And he refers to this letter. We, never got that letter. we didn't get this letter. Uh, and it, he says, I, so it comes from him. It doesn't come from Derek Poole, which was also dated on that same day. So we have not heard from that letter, about that letter as well, okay? Um, it seems like there was obviously some miscommunication between Mr. Lewicki and Mr. Poole uh, about about the, the status and the validity of the permit. Um, you know, in this letter, Mr. Lewicki was nullifying a, per, a permit that was already null and void. 
Yeah, that's what it comes down to. So, so two things happened that could have changed the direction of this of the of what went on, what has is going on with the house. First off, if we had gotten the letter that was registered mail, Drew would have acted on that. He would have done whatever he needed to do. This is this is this is a house that was assessed at a hundred thousand dollars. So he would have done what he would have needed to done to be able to continue on with that with the house. I'm not with and Mr. Lewicki, he's nullifying a permit that he would have known that it's null. We didn't know that. He would have and um, in the in the letter he's nulling it because we haven't done enough work, but yet in the for order to demolish it's for it saying it's unsafe. He did he said that he did an inspection. Um, it wasn't with us, it wasn't with Drew, it wasn't with Irwin, but he did it through a window. But all the work that needed to be done was in the basement. And when I was looking at pictures, which you would have gotten as well, there aren't, we don't see basement windows. I don't know, he would have done inspections, his in inspection, well, even up here, um, he would have done his inspection from a top window, not a basement window. And if you look in the, the permit, uh, in the photos from the engineer, all of the, all of the things that needed to get done were in the basement. They weren't up on top. So I'm not sure. I'm just saying that I, all I can speak to is what what we had seen and how it uh, how it outplayed. Um, we understand that that the oversights were probably unintentional. Okay, um, but if the decision is not overturned to dis rescind Drew's um, the the order to demolish Drew's house. It'll lead to un unintentional financial losses to Drew as the owner of the now structurally safe house. Uh, that has, has been assessed for $100,000. As from the engineer's report, you can see that Drew's house on 346 uh, 6th Avenue South in Swan River is now structurally safe. And he would like to proceed with the next set of renovations, which he needs for the main floor with electrical plumbing, whatever needs to get fixed on, in that house. Um, in conclusion, um, if our mayor and town council do not rescind the order to demolish Drew's house, uh, Drew will have to take the advice of the engineer, who, who Darren Eady, and to seek the advice of a lawyer and to determine if Drew's rights have been violated and how Drew can protect his investment in this property. Thank you. Uh, any questions? I did read all the attachments that uh, came with your delegation. Um, we've obviously admitted to some administrative errors on our part. Mm -hmm. It does look to me like there is some confusion mm -hmm. in the means of communicating, especially when there was potentially a piece one missing yeah. that both parties weren't aware of, as well as the way you've indicated that as of that August 25th yeah. date, the permit was null and void, yes. but a follow-up the following year is mm -hmm. indicating where are you at with this work. So that yeah. is, I would agree, very confusing for me as well. It does. Uh, my question would be, is your engineer also indicated maybe in working together on this mm -hmm. for, for us to sit down basically and mm -hmm nail down a timeline absolutely and fo follow a strict timeline to yeah. get this house back to a lock up and occupational state yeah. so with what's remaining to be done roughly speaking how much time would be needed to get that work done well the structural part is done yeah it's like I mean Derek saw it what do, you, what do you think is reasonable? Who saw the house? Well, <clears throat> I, the town doesn't determine what needs to be done, an engineer does, so 
Yeah, and part of that conversation that has to be with, with the information that we will take back, our administration will take back and speak with the Mr. Maliki about that, and council will have some information on that at a future uh, committee of the whole meeting. I don't, know, I don't think that we can actually answer that right now. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so I've, I've looked over your information, I've looked over the information that administrations and there's a point of confusion for myself yeah. and that is the building permit being rescinded after in December or and I'm gonna ask or make a recommendation that we send this file to the next cow where we can have administration and the building inspector walk us through that and exactly what happened at that point uh, to go because I clearly remember the discussion where Mr. Dennis Chuck was here mm -hmm. uh, after the fire about uh, replacing the beams and stuff like that, and I clearly got into it with him regarding the beams and that. So I clearly remember that, and I clearly remember us agreeing to move forward with the repair. Um, so this is where I'm getting confused about the erroneously <coughs> approved. So this is where I need all these files to be walked through step by step to see where we are, are at with this mm -hmm. and and then go from there. Sure, that's a, that's a great idea. Because uh, like, to me, I, I follow it up to a point from like the fire to there and then I follow it from there, but there's a chunk in the middle that's hazy mm -hmm. and that's surrounding, uh, and I, I looked at the building permit application. There is no date on there that it says it has to be uh, with one of you. Like there, there's, there's comments made and statements in letters that are not on the literature. So I need to have that walk through me and everything verified before I can either make a motion or have to say to halt the demolition or, or go from there. So I don't know where we're at with the, the, the request for proposals to have to demolish, but I I'm requesting that we could put this on the next week's call maybe for a discussion to have uh, the building inspector uh, bylaw and the administration walk the council through this step by step to see where we're at the exact chain of events mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah. if that's okay. agreeable to everybody. um council member <clears throat> i i would agree with with uh, bumping it to a cow meeting. Um, what I recognize you might not be able to answer my previous question right here on the spot, but one piece of information I would find helpful to have at that cow meeting is if you guys could just sit down and take a look at what is remaining to do in the house before it could be occupied and lived in again. And maybe prior to next Tuesday, if that's the cow meeting we're going to be putting it on, um, maybe just giving us a ballpark where it's not something we're strictly going to hold you to at that point but just for me that helps me out because are we looking at six months are we looking at a year are we looking at what do what time frame do you guys need I, I would say six months would be fair okay yeah. so if you can by all means take that back go and take a look at what's left to do because I know I mentioned electrical plumbing things like that so just take a look at what needs to be done and maybe just put something down, just rough draft it for us, sure. estimate of what needs to be done and kind of the timelines you figure are reasonable to get it done. I would appreciate that for sure. myself personally. Council White. Well, just a compliment to, to the dentist, Chuck said you have the confidence that your council will listen. Mm -hmm. Whether they agree or not is debatable, mm -hmm. but you, you have the confidence in yourself and this team that you're part of come forward and express your opinions because I think all our constituents have to understand that. Absolutely. We pay the bills. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. to uh, uh, something under five, six, third reading, uh, accommodation tax. 
Resolve the bylaw number 11, 2023, being the bylaw of the town of Swanover, to establish an accommodation tax be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Councillor uh, Medwood. Uh, I'd like to read my reasons for opposition. We have time, yeah. Okay, so on August 13th, the Committee of the Whole meeting, the General Government and Finance Committee communicated to Council that they had a very successful meeting with the hotel accommodation businesses and the President of the Hotel Association on July 18th, 2024. Their report stated that the hotel businesses were accepting of the bylaw with only one request, that the compensation be a percentage of the total tax collected versus a flat dollar amount. August 17th, 2024, Council received an email from Ramona Doherty. Thank you. On behalf of the Swan River Hotel Motel Group with the hotel businesses account to the July 18th, 2024 meeting. It states the hotel owners are still opposed to the implementation of the accommodation tax, in particular the lack of enforcement for short-term rentals, requested removal of recreation and active living from uses of accommodation tax, specifically to give clear direction for use towards tourism and economic development, bylaw to address committee of hoteliers and council to be established in the overseas spending of funds, provide hoteliers with regular reports on amount collected and where it is being spent, compensation to administer the tax start at 3%. Upon review of the third reading, my opposition and questions presented below. So in the bylaw, we still have it listed as the and whereas statement ends with specific purposes to be determined by the Council of the Town of Swan River. So we have not addressed the request for a committee. Uh, this does not account for or include representation from the accommodation businesses. Uh, April 2nd, 2024 public hearing, Manitoba Hotel Association President, Accommodation Business Owners, and Deputy Mayor Morio spoke to accommodation businesses being involved in a planning specific use for revenue generated from the accommodation tax. This is not happening here yet. Suggestion we establish a committee that includes fair representation of accommodation businesses, hotel, motel, and short-term rentals, and establish a specific plan for use of the accommodation tax revenue prior to implementing the tax. Definition of, uh, we're lacking a definition for what community enhancement means in reference to this bylaw. Section 4, accommodation tax in the amount of 5%. There's been no change in this amount, even though accommodation businesses, hotels, and Airbnbs have suggested lower rates may be more palatable. There's a few other points here, but my suggestion is that we lower the initial tax amount to a mutually agreeable amount and establish a fair means of charging hotels and STRs prior Your to implementation. Further discussion? Go ahead. Um, I make a motion to table this because I, as reading through it, there still hasn't been changes in the draft or, or the draft, third reading draft here um, that have not been incorporated in from our discussion with Ramona that day or, and I wasn't here at the last town meeting, um, so I don't know what else was discussed at that meeting, but there is errors in this final draft that. Uh, to me, it's, it's not ready for the reading. Motion to table. Second. 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 <clears throat> All in favor? It's tabled to uh, the next meeting, to the next regular meeting. Cal. Go to a Discussion, but this will come as a vote at the next regular meeting. Okay, seven, seven point one. Uh, this is on the um, the housing summit uh, representation CMHA, uh, which is they're having this uh, housing summit on September the nineteenth uh, for representation. Deputy Mayor Morial. May I make the suggestion that council appoint or have your worship, since you're on the homeless committee, uh, attend the task and uh, or the 
formally be appointed to the task force for homelessness and attend the summit. That's a motion. Uh, yes. Okay. Seconded by? I'll second. Okay. You got that? Uh, do you want a resolution? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because any but any person that's uh, any member of council that sits on a committee that represents council must be appointed first. Well, we don't have any details as to where the summit is. Yeah, I sent an email to Ms. Lapaz today. Tell me when you have it there. And you should update. Resolved, uh, Mary Lance Jacobson will be appointed to attend the Housing and Homeless Summit uh, being held September the 19th, 2024. Moved uh, by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, 7.2. Result the accommodation for Pamela Johnson be received. Is that recommend? Uh, recommendation? Accommodation. 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 Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Midwood. Discussion? Councillor Midwood? Um, yeah. Why is this one not open to the public on the agenda as there's a few other items on the agenda that could be and should probably be open to the public? Uh, it did have the personal information, so we could have redacted those and black lined them. That's personal information, which is not all. Councilor Bobber? I was under the same impression. I just wondered if maybe the mayor could read the letter out to people that listen to it, hear what this person had to say. I don't think the yeah, officer here heard his name. Not telling what to do. Just a thought. Okay, I, uh, the name, so you said the name, but. Um, I guess I can read it. Um, it's a very nice letter that we received from a rate pair on some of our um, uh, public works people that did uh, an excellent job. So I will read it to whom it may concern. This past week, your crew of workers came to my repair, my uh, sewer line. I would like you to know that they did an exemplary job on a quite difficult and problem prone project. They were diligent, very conscientious, and very de uh, delightful to engage with. Uh, everyone was very polite and friendly. I think they deserve some recognition for representing the town of Swan River as such as good ambassadors while working in the neighborhood. Uh, I, for one, very appreciate being treated with politeness and a smile, and they were a good group of guys. So back to the resolution. All in favor? It's carried. 7.3. Resolve the building and demolition permits 4224 through 4624 with a total estimated value of $90,400 be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Eight, eight point one. Result: the director of public works report being received. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Poole, maybe you might know, but do we know approximately how much contaminated soil is coming in? Yeah. No, so, I can I can find that. No, I don't know. 
Anything further? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Result of the Director of Recreation's report be received. Moved by Councilor Powell, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? Councilor White. Yeah, I'm sure everything's uh, as it should be, but with the, with the ice not getting in, as everybody's aware, that, that puts behind the eight ball and potentially lost some uh, players who may or may not have made our cap, may or may not have made the team. And that thing comes around every year at the same time. And uh, yeah, things break down. Could we not start it a couple days earlier to preempt that happening? Just to, like two days should be enough. Maybe we've got like a three or four. Is, it, is our bill, is our hydro bill going to be crazy because we start two days earlier without people in there or not? So uh, I'm concerned why we don't, didn't uh, get on that sooner. I can speak to that a bit. Sure. So we turned our plant on on August 2nd. We don't turn it on any earlier or we have another $10,000 hydro bill to run it in July. So when we turned the plant on, it wasn't running right and it took a long time to diagnose. It ended up being a sensor under the floor. So in, August, in July, we're actually started and because of the sand and the pipes, we have to soak it with water. It takes about a week by hand, soaking, soaking, soaking. Then when we can turn the pump on, or the ice plant on, then it will start to cool and freeze. Then we can start to flood. So it wasn't until that point that we didn't know it wasn't working right. And Swan Paw dropped everything else on their workload and came and spent days with us trying to figure out what our problem was. It's unfortunate that it did push it back, um, but it surely wasn't for lack of trying to get back on task. I don't necessarily feel we lost any players. Uh, the conditioning camp got pushed back a bit, but the Stampeders were able to make up for some of that. We added in a few hours for them, and I think, I believe, I'm not sure if they lost revenue or, or not. I don't know that piece. But we, I don't believe we could start any sooner. That plant is not built to run in July. Um, it, it, it's been really difficult, even today being plus 31. Our plant sits at 25, which means we can't flood the ice because it heats it up too much. So there were multiple issues with it, and it took a long time. We had electricians, we had Swan Paw, we just had so many people trying to figure it out, frantically trying to figure it out because we didn't know we were going to have ice at all. So, so started, I, like three weeks before the due date. Yeah, we turned our pump on on August 2nd. I'm okay. I'm okay. And our plan is to do the same next year, and just you know, we're just going to keep. Trying, it's it's old equipment we're dealing with, and that makes sense. To you. Thank yeah. You. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? Go ahead. Um, under your director and follow, just for point of clarification, we recently installed that brick in quotations phone charging station as a trial. What is a brick phone charging? Brick is uh, it's uh, those power packs that you can buy to charge your phone in when it's dead. So it's this, it looks like a brick, it says a brick on it, and we've installed it up um, by the ATM machine, and it's got all of the, it looks like a toaster, actually, and it's got all of those power packs inside. So if somebody at a wedding or something, their phone is starting to die and they still want to take pictures, they go and scan this QR code, this little power pack pops out of the toaster, and they can plug their phone into it and charge it, and they pay for it's like a dollar for 30 minutes or something like that and they can bill whatever they want and when they're done they just put it back in the toaster goes through their credit card if for some reason they end up walking away with it or stuck in their pocket they can return it to any other brick place there are many in manitoba we're being pretty innovative here this is pretty new so i know there's some in the university uh, bu and u of m so if they happen to be going to one of those places they could return it otherwise their credit card card gets charged I believe $25 and they are now the proud owner of that power pack. And the power pack when it pops up it's got all these attachments on the back so it's compatible with any any cell phone you have. It's very cool. Interesting. We get a little bit of money off it. Um, we haven't seen any revenue yet but it was just another service added to that building. Okay, and then so one question regarding the disc golf, the park with the damaged hoop. Uh, were we successful in getting that repaired? 
adequately? Or? Yes, uh, so Corby was able to reinforce the welds. Um, we, risk, we reached out to, um, I forgot the company name, the disc golf people where we ordered the parts. And they said that they should have held up better than that. So we're going to monitor monitor the rest of them and they did send us out a new basket so we've got one sitting in the office in case this happens again and if it does they want to know um, but they seem to think we told them what happened uh, we told them that it was adults or teenagers you know some not somebody little jumping up and down on it and they felt that that shouldn't have broke so feeling that like hopefully it's just a weak one and the most cross it doesn't happen again okay perfect thank you for the discussion all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, 8.3. Resolve the July 2024 Stone River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councilor Medwood. Seconded by Councilor Bob at the <coughs> Sorry. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Councilor reports. Councilor Boychuk. Well, um, had a few meetings with the uh, Legacy Committee uh, regarding uh, an upcoming grant that's opening, so um, we're working on that, and as well as um, discussing uh, setting up and, and getting a public consultation kind of put together to bring some information out to the public as far as what's been going on and, and happening and then discussing how we're going to um, be in contact with our surrounding um, municipalities and different organizations within our valley community to uh, work together uh, regarding this project. So um, some good meetings there. and. Uh, good information but uh, there'll be a lot of work going on in this next month uh, regarding that grant application will be probably all about that for the next 45 days or so okay. mm -hmm. I think so okay Councilor White we know a lot uh, the privilege of meeting with Dr. Chesley and uh, Deputy Memorial we've uh, Beerman, uh, Brad, 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 Wyatt, at uh, a small meeting about to, to trying to recruit this young woman. And all she could say is if I had a choice to go, I'd be here, which is a real compliment to the doctors over there, and the team over there, and the community as a whole. She was so pleased with everything. And, you know, she says, I loved it here. The only problem is my parents live in Gimli, and if there was air traffic uh, of some sort of a flight on the weekends, I'd be there in a flash. So distance was her only concern with, with our community. And uh, you know, in those cases, they talk as usual about work-life balance. And the other of the people sort of seem to think that's, well, it should be very important. Uh, she says there are some issues with PMH. There's uh, unequal payments of uh, different things. They can get paid more money for concept X and golf, and they can get paid in so on. Jeffrey uh, Mary Morgan, we'll, we'll talk about that later if he wishes. Uh, so we, other items grew out of that discussion, which we will share with our medical service team shortly, and uh, try to improve on. One of the things that really appealed to me personally, uh, I think Council Memorial thought about it, is we have to look again at the northern and remote uh, medical students who are working at Thompson, Fordfield, and Paw. We flew 10 of them in here eight, six, eight years ago, and I think seven of the 10 are here. I think we signed all 10 at that time. So I think we can be more proactive about looking after the doctors who are doing their training in the north. So that was pretty exciting, uh, I think, for all of us. Uh, I'm sure we talked about, we hope the CT scan is opening in the summer there, but I think we've got since then. It was fantastic. As of uh, July the 12th, whenever that was, we had 444 people gone through the CT scan already. Now, think of how many ambulances that saved us going out of our town that stayed here. Think of how many people stayed here and got their health care care. So it's just been remarkable. The two young ladies who are at the moment in charge of that are doing an exemplary job. Our community, all, all the RNs have uh, paid the bills to date, and uh, there's no indication there's going to change. So the CT scan, I uh, just can't say thank you enough to the Valley community for making that working, our MLA and, and the rest of them. 
and the town float is a float. Uh, Council Mori and his team put together a float promoting our community. And uh, all that is appreciated too. The other things I'll say for our director's privilege. Okay. Thank you. Some of the items that you had in there could also be saved for your director's privilege as well. I'll just remind you. Council Bonner. Thank you, Rich. Uh, not too much to report on. Just uh, for information's sake, uh, if you see some equipment at the town wells over there working, that will be watershed doing a repairing job. Riverbank down there, so it's not they're not working on the town well. They're just using it as a So just there's been some ongoing cons uh, discussion with Mr. Harvey before we went on holidays on the whole project when when or it was started. They've got to be ongoing thing. Maybe have a committee meetings or something to get a little bit more hands on what's going on here. So some of the things were like patching. Where do we? How many square feet of patching do we? Or maybe we should be doing streets per block or something that's a popular discussion. That's about it. Okay, thank you. Council Medwood. I don't have a lot to report. Uh, I did just want to mention because I just realized that it wasn't really spoken to you uh, when um, Director Clausen was doing her report, but Swan Valley Communities That Care has funded some lighting for Regent Park. So we are collaborating with the rec department with getting that uh, installed and set up in the uh, Legion Park there so there's a little more lighting. I do have a question in regards to the closure of the bus line in town and how that's going to impact our water samples and testing that gets done somewhat regularly. We'll find it for you. Okay. That's all I've got. Okay. Uh, can you remember more? Um, not a full lot. Uh, so um, last week I met with uh, the medical services team representatives with Dr. Cheesley and Councilor White and reported on that. So um, as Councilor White reported that uh, she would be here. It's just that she does have a little family that she needs to be close to, and that's where um, she needs to reside for the short term. Um, she does have a location. Um, selected in that time frame, but uh, she is still keeping her options open and will be uh, visiting the community on Mocums in the future and has not completely ruled us out, so, uh, which is good to hear. But she was very uh, thoughtful and uh, provided a lot of suggestions where we could uh, look and recruit and some inefficiencies and deficiencies uh, between different locations that were brought to our attention. Um, last week, uh, we had our Rec committee uh, meeting where Director Clausen and the committee discussed uh, the numerous uh, projects and options and concerns ongoing in the region park. So, as those uh, come forward, uh, we will share them. But one of them uh, that was discussed was the uh, solar lights that the community the care uh, group has purchased and given to the uh, rec department to be uh, installed in the very near future. Um, and then just ongoing dealing with public and their concerns regarding uh, the discarded needles and that issue. So that's all I got. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Powell. Okay, well, I think pretty much everything has been discussed. Maybe um, we met with the rec, um, legacy committee, we met with. Um, I guess the library has. Had a, a meeting. We've had a couple meetings with them. Um, it's been a, it's really been a breath of fresh air having a, a head librarian in, the, in there now. Um, things seem to be really, really moving along, and there seems to be no real issues. Things things are just it's, it's nice to have someone in there taking care of that. Um, we do have to say a huge thank you to John and Slack for for picking that up in the time that she's been able to kind of just step away right now, so that's been a good thing. Um, yeah, there has been lots of uh, lots of discussion with um, people in regards to um, the discarded needles, so we, we, uh, we've got a few things in, in place with them, um, just with our friendship center as well, but I think everything else can be mentioned at the Okay. For me, um, I guess just in the last uh, little while before I went on holidays, some things that have uh, consumed a little bit of my time have been 
uh, after the, uh, the, re the uh, delegation with the harm reduction and, and the Prairie Mountain Health, um, I had some conversations with uh, Minister Smith's office, and uh, in particular, Mr. Kelly um, had arranged uh, for us to speak with uh, Andre Forrest, who works in Minister uh, Smith's office, as well as uh, Felix from the Premier's office on some of these issues of uh, distribution and also for collection. And um, they are working right now with, uh, in the midst right now with Prairie Mountain Health and, and coming up with some solutions on some of the stuff, but that's still not uh, been fully discuss uh, discussed yet, but there are some things that they are working on and, and them understanding that or hearing our concerns of uh, yield distribution and the thoughts of um, we are responsible for the collection of, uh, of uh, uh, used needles within the town. And uh, we didn't completely agree with that. Let me just put it that way. Uh, I did speak with uh, Chief Janai. Um, again, we try to meet up about once a month. And uh, we did speak again just before I went away. Um, main topic of uh, discussion was with the distribution of uh, needles. He watched our video uh, of our council meeting that night uh, and uh, he was not very happy. In fact, they, he had told me that they had told that they had banned needles to be distributed on their First Nations. And they were not very happy with how they're not being um, cleaned up or, or collected in the way that they're supposed to be. So they are some big concerns there. And of course, with the addictions and all that in the future of how uh, people will be treated and, and, and the plan for that. And that's more of a long-term thing. We've heard a little bit about that in the last little while too. So um, he had actually told me that he wants me to travel with him to, uh, to visit the minister and the premier on these topics. And also just on that note too, I have been in communication directly with the premier on some of the issues that we had discussed uh, out of that meeting that night and some of the comments that came to council and myself as well uh, from the members and social media and all that kind of stuff. Um, the last item that Chief and I talked about was their land and what they're going to be building on their land. So that's still in discussion with their membership, so we're not quite privy to that yet. So. But um, he thinks that's uh, not too far away. Other than that, that was, that's it for me. CEO Pool, you have a report. I have a lot for council. I'm not going to go through all of them. But first, I need to apologize to Deputy Mayor Morio when he said I had the wrong attachment during the accommodation tax uh, resolution. I was in, I did not believe him. <laughs> I do. I was, I reviewed what was in the file, not what made the agenda. The attachment is wrong. <laughs> I apologize. I'm going to get into council's plans. In the way of council's plans. Uh, as for my report, uh, there's a there's a lot there uh, in terms of communications internal and externally. But just for my my office, uh, if council can note that September 24th will be the the priority workshop. So we'll go through that with administration. Uh, and then you also see at that Cal meeting the capital project status review for council for, for discussion <coughs> for next year's budget. Uh, as for the bylaws, just quickly knowing the accommodation tax will be tabled, the pet ownership uh, really isn't getting a priority. We, we, we've done some sit down meetings, but Maybe once we get into the winter months, uh, we can bring that back. I think the, the priority session will help determine where that's going to sit and where the, the animal control bylaw goes. Uh, and then the one that's not listed but uh, is being looked at is the incentive, uh, incentive plan bylaw in regard to the delegation we had this summer. Uh, and as for the McCullough report, I'm not going to be speaking on any details. This is a public meeting out of respect for our employees, but uh, 
I do ask they're long, but please read the, the implementation plans of, of what we'll be going over in the next town meetings uh, over the next few months. And then just, uh, I guess what you'd call our, our achievements in internal and external communications. Uh, that's it. Okay. Councilor Medford. I have a couple questions regarding your report. On the page one by law enforcement where it says working discussion on future policy slash bylaw amendments to bring to council, including how to specifically deal with lawyers, domiciles within town limits. Have we have any discussions taken place yet? Just nothing since our last meeting. That that bullet stayed there. Uh, we've only had the one initial meeting of the employees and and that's it. So when we, when we get to there, I think that, well, that'll be another one where, where I'll be asking what's council's priority? Do, do they want us to draft this or the incentive plan? Or what do you want us to spend our time on? So uh, that's where that lies. Okay, under municipal office at the top of page two, meeting with cleaner to evaluate first months and working on economical solution to weeds, exposed limits of building, purging, covering foundation walls, et cetera. Um, have those been accomplished? Do we have an update on those? Because that's kind of the... That, it was, I made it very clear that, that the elected officials must be involved and, and CA will well be read. He, this was his initial conversation that, that he would like to entertain those, those efficiencies if our two councils can, can get to agreement. So I did say that, and I can't speak for council, but I would assume that they would want this through a written agreement between the two councils, and, and he did agree. But it was basically just uh, that municipality inquiring that they would like to join forces on those items. Where that goes, I don't know. But in the end, I said we would accept written proposals and review them if they come. I think that's speaking to um, something different, but. How does that tie into an economical solution for our weeds? Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about Mantona's Bozeman uh, no. inquiry. But thanks for answering yeah, that one. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Where are you in the weeds? Page two of your report. How is the cleaner doing? That too, because that's been the same one for a couple months now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> for a couple of meetings. Good. You know, we've, we've had. We've had issues that they've addressed, so you know they they responded quite well. I believe it's I think they're doing a good job. Uh, again, I'm I'm lost on the weeds. What's it? What's the page heck? two municipal office? The second bullet, working on economical solution to weeds. Oh. Weeds yeah, that is side? that's along the east side of the building here. So we're trying to find something where the parging quits and the weeds come up. Walks are all over the sidewalks. We're trying to find economical solutions to. Have we found one yet? No. Is it the stones or the weeds? Both. Keep the stones in place. You might want to look into a landscaping glue. Yeah. I don't know how expensive it is, but you can spray down a landscaping glue and they'll keep them in place. Yeah. Um, my next question was under RCMP page two. Uh, you met on August 26th with Staff Sergeant Henson, who all attended that meeting? Just the Staff Sergeant and myself. Okay. So that was just for, for him to go over the communication template from AMM, the expectation from the town at those meetings, and, and to schedule the first uh, meeting where he'll be meeting with Council, and then we agreed that we would schedule those on a full annual basis. So he would come here quarterly, but he wanted it, he wanted it to be known that if council requests uh, a meeting with him, that he'd be available on request. Okay, thank you. Council Ballard. Is there been any movement on doing something with our friend here with uh, the speaking of stones there, like a new pathway for people to come up? That'll be a discussion anyway on the budget. If we want council on something, yeah. something that we don't do. Okay. We have enough for the emergency uh, control center, but that was good. Yeah. Anything further? Nope. Okay. Nine. Nine point one. 
whereas the town of Swan River must repair the corroded pipe hangers and ventilation conditions within the Swan Valley Credit Union Aquatic Center basement mechanical room and surge tank to avoid risk of failure, as indicated in a specialized engineering metallurgic metallurgic assessment report performed by Test Labs Incorporated. And whereas the town has engaged associated Associated engineering to, provi engineering to provide project management services included pre-designed detailed design and tender services in the process to mitigate risk associated with hangar issues. Therefore, be it resolved, the town of Swan River accept the pre-designed report received from Associated Engineering. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Council Boychuk. Discussion. Councilor Medwood. I've read those reports. There's a significant amount of money that's going to be needed. Um, where's the money coming from is my question. Yeah, so Council's aware that um, to get to a tendered document, if you see on page just so everyone's understanding of this process. It will be on page two, right at the very top. So the proposal we got. Which document? Uh, sorry, the administration report. Thank you, sir. So council can see the prelim design, design development, design construction uh, docs, and tendering services. That section there gets us to an actual tendered number. So it's, it's going, if you add that up, that's what the cost is to get there. They're estimating $20,000 for project admin during construction and commissioning. Uh, we've, we've asked them for a Class D estimate. They provided that to replace the pipe hangers, 292. For the ventilation to change the air conditions, 254 roughly. And that's not included their costs. So I'm taking total project costs right from the start, not just construction. It's what they're estimating to be tendered plus their own project management costs for a total of 646. So if you're asking where 158 come, when budget came, I qualified that number saying we never do this, and this is why. We at the time, we had the metallurgic study from Test Labs. It was just changing out a few hangers. Now there's the surge tank. Now there's the air conditions. We're not looking for a $158,000 fix because of that. We're looking to fix the building. And this is what the experts are saying it's going to cost. So to qualify that number, which is a big number, it's very important. And I state it important to note that the pre-designed Class D estimate includes a 50% contingency and that to any, anyone who understands construction will tell you that they just simply don't know what's going to happen. If you put a 50% contingency on something, that's them telling you that they have no idea what this is going to cost. It could be 323 or 646 as of right now. So to, to how we're going to pay for this, council would have to, A, are we going to move forward with this? Like, we have a resolution to, to go through to tender to get the project management done so that council sees what this is going to cost. Uh, we will require residents. It doesn't mean that we're just going to go ahead and do this. We'll have to determine, and I'm sure myself and the CFO will give you a proposal of how we're going to pay for this prior to this thing to council seeing a tender. But you need to be aware of the Changes on this project. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, you're wrong. So. Okay. Um, how much of the one hundred fifty-eight thousand dollars that we did actually budget for has been spent? Like, what's remaining? Right now, officially fifteen thousand five hundred ninety-two, but we're expecting uh, their design development invoice. So that's what's remaining, or that's what's been spent. That's today? what's been spent. Just over fifteen thousand. So the way I see it and read it here, understanding that there's the 50% contingency, um, which we, or I knew that 
until we get actual tendered documents, it's a shot in the dark, just like we had with the test lab um, project there. So currently we're on track, maybe a couple weeks behind from the schedule that we had set out. Um, Associated Engineering is, is doing what we're asking to do, and this is just to basically receive the report to date and basically give them the green light to go to um, tendering and talk to whoever they need to do to uh, get us firm prices and yeah, eliminate the 50% contingency and bring that down to wherever so that we know where we're at and that's what we decide as council is if this project gets scaled up, scaled down, canceled, building whatever needs to be decided at that time which um, I think that will put us right in the middle or beginning of capital budget cycle so we'll know where we're at. And yeah, and, and like we have no no drawings to go off of. As we get into class C, B, and A estimates, you know, we'll be able to review what's happening. What can we draw? Where, where's the bulk of the money? How can we right. massage it into a yeah, so project that's authorized in the financial plan? One hundred fifty-eight thousand to get us to tender documents and tenders. Basically, yeah. so we're not even close to that yet. No, so. Uh, it's a project that's proceeding along, and this is just a progress report giving us a, a heads up that no one knows until bidders put numbers to paper and hand it in. That's correct. And then we have a decision to make as council. Yeah. Council line. I may be out in left field, whatever that means, but I'm baseball time. Is there any, like obviously there's a, a judicial program, there's lawyers are involved, and all that's going on as we speak. Is there any possibility that that process could be sped up if, for example, the town of Swan River announced we're shutting down the pool, we can't afford to fix it because all this litigation is going on because we haven't been paid? Would that give the judicial people some say, holy smokes, let's look at this program a little closer? I have no idea. I don't know if you should even comment on that. Yeah, yeah. Anything legally should not be discussed. Anything further? What's legal about that? Well, yeah. I just you're talking about something legal, like your ramifications and whatever that is part of the, um, the legal. Uh, so when can and where can we discuss this? In camera. Okay. When it's a good question. question. It's a good question, I but I just don't think we can do that right here. I have no problem with it as long as we get to discuss it. Yeah. And I'll ask for the next in camera meetings who can be there in today's. Okay. Please. Anything further? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 9.2. Resolved that Mayor Lance Jacobson and the Chief Administrative Officer Derek Poole be authorized to sign the facility agreement with Swan Valley Stan Peters Junior A Hockey Club Incorporated. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Mendel. The document still requires a couple of corrections. There's still some mentions of recreation operations coordinator that hasn't been edited to recreation director in the new title. Uh, page um, 7A and C. Page 5 and 6. Mentioned. So we can. We can do that. I'll print off after once. Just 
as as amended. As amended? Okay, as amended. Okay. Okay, so we'll be just adding that to as amended. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 9.3. Whereas a resident of the municipality of Swan Valley West has made application for a subdivision of land located at uh, Northeast 223627 West Prime Meridian and has requested a letter of support from the town of Swan River. And whereas contained on the land is a sewer ejection system located within 460 meters of the town of Swan River limit, which is a which is in violation of the on-site wastewater management system regulation section 5C8 of the Schedule E. And whereas the town of Swan River in this one-off circumstance acknowledges that the system is existing, not new, and the town does not anticipate any immediate development in the area. Therefore, be it resolved, the Chief Administrative Officer be sign, authorize the sign and send a letter of support to the owner of land located northeast 223627 WPM to accompany the application to subdivide. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion, Councillor Medwell. What exactly is this vote? So I'm just going to send out uh, an updated drawing so Council can see uh, exactly where the ejector is and then the, the dotted line town boundary. The ejector is somewhat kind of circled. You'll see the house. The ejector and the distance of it, so better than the drawing that's provided. So basically, the ejector is technically too close to uh, a boundary. Yeah, it is existing, so it's been there for I don't know. But uh, does everybody know what an ejector is? I brought this forward to uh, CAO Pool in a conversation with the owner. This is your property, probably been there 30 years, or should, if not more. This is, uh, because of this, there's a piece of property in the town of Swan River is being held up for, it's for sale. And the sale cannot go through because of this. So right now, this is in the minister's office. <coughs> so I suggested to the owners that they have a a request for us to look at the application. The jet system has been there for 30, maybe 40 years. Uh, it's a 1,500 feet as a rule, or, or how many meters. They're sitting at 970, which is nothing. If that property ever develops within the town of Swan River, there'll be water and sewer, and they'll be hooked up to that. The ejector will be gone. So, with that, the 1,500 feet is to a property line. There is no residence. There is no, there's businesses that connect on the other side of on Highway 10 East, and they, this property is on the airport road. So that's the distance between, you sort of somebody would be affected. The distance is what they're saying, they're ne negligible about, is a property line. There is nothing in between after that property line. It is a lot more than 1,500 feet. Okay. Anything uh, for the discussion? Yeah, I'm, I'm still looking for a little more clarification as to why, if the land isn't in our jurisdiction, why we're being asked for a letter of support. Because it's too close to our property line, to the town boundary. So the letter is basically to say that we are okay with it. Yeah, yeah. And just further information, uh, there's a regulation in Manitoba that says if it ever does get developed, if the sewer line or the sewer main goes uh, through your property, you must hook into it. So they won't have a choice. They have to go. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? 9.4. 
9.4. Whereas the TELUS phone number has seen a significant increase in injectable drug use and improper disposal of unsafe used dirty syringes with exposed needles and findings of unused pre-filled drug syringes in public spaces and buildings throughout the town such as parks, parking lots, roadways, and children's playgrounds. And whereas findings have also occurred where used dirty syringes are deliberately discarded in a manner which increased the risk of needle stick to unsuspecting innocent people. And whereas the matter of a harm reduction network office in Small River confirms that organization, organization freely distributes syringes for injectable drug use and other drug use paraphernalia. And whereas at a recent delegation by the Mount of a Harm Reduction Network, representatives to the town, small, town council meeting advised that it is not their nor the drug users' responsibility to collect and dispose unsafe, used, dirty syringes, but rather the town of Swan River responsibility. Therefore, be it resolved, the town of Swan River public, publicly confirm that the safety and health of the citizens and visitors from dirty needle stick is the utmost importance. Be it further resolved, the town of Swan River commence any and all necessary actions to cease and prevent the distribution of injectable drug syringes and related paraphernalia within the town's jurisdiction by all organizations provide such materials. And further be it resolved, the town of Swan River is willing to engage with organizations to come to an agreeable solution to the community's concern in regards to improper Disposal of needles. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Council White. Discussion? Um, I'm bringing this motion forward. Um, I think it's uh, pretty self um, explanatory. Um, the, I guess, uh, disposal or leaving of dirty exposed or used syringes in, in our community is just it, it's just gone rapid. Uh, harm reduction is no longer what it used to be when it was first inception two years ago uh, when I was in healthcare. It was a needle exchange program. Now um, right from harm reduction's own words, it's handed out by the thousands. 150,000 I think is what the number they gave to the council that I've seen on the video. Um, I have no issue with harm reduction uh, if it's the full package, but doing piecemeal what works and what the easy parts are is not harm reduction. That's just ticking off boxes and making people feel good, but it's not dealing with the issue or people's concerns uh, or medical addictions and whatnot. So I have no issue with harm reduction, but it needs the entire services and not the easy handout components. Um, the Parkland District is moving forward. Uh, we requested and it was mentioned that uh, it should be uh, retractable uh, needles versus the, the vanish points. And the vanish points, if you don't know what that is, it's just, it's a needle exposed but has a manual slide thing on it that uh, unless you purposely um, enact that to make the needle cover, um, cover off the needle, that's a vantage point. So you have the man versus the retractable. Once the plunger goes down, it automatically retracts the needle up into the plunger and makes it safe. They say that's too much, um, but yet they're handing them out there and they don't care if they're actually used or not since my administration in the homes that we have seized thousands of them to begin with. So they don't really care, in my opinion, what's going on with this. Um, the majority of the people that are seeking these things um, and as harm reduction is that they're trying to help people. Well, these people are not wanting help. The majority of the people are looking for a free handout of supplies to keep their habit. People that want help get help and move on and they're not part of the system. It was asked uh, by Councillor White uh, regarding stats of the successes of the harm reduction program. The question got uh, sidelined and was never given an answer. I personally have asked PMH at the most recent board meeting 
for stats on the harm reduction. I have yet to receive that. Um, I have yet to find stats on harm time, reduction. Your time has expired. Further discussion? Yeah, I don't think any of us are opposed to having people get better. But if we just give the needles out in the second half, the equation is not present. I don't know how it's working. And I have some numbers shared with me, and I uh, hope somebody can tell me I'm wrong, that PMA spends $1.3 million on administration for the HARM program, and $130,000 of that goes to program costs. So it sounds like a, a pretty heavy top level stuff. You know, if we could take uh, one of those millions out of there and spend it on social workers, psychologists, psychiatrists, whomever is, to help the people who definitely need it, I accept that. But I can't accept that this is working as it is. I actually was watching the news the other day, and I don't think we're far off of, of what you're going to see happening, I think, across the country. Um, Ontario has made it very public to that they are going away from the uh, safe supply model of harm reduction and turning towards treatment and rehabilitation programs. So I think um, this is something that we're going to be seeing a lot more of. Further discussion? So I just wondered if this resolution passes, are we going to be looking for the support of the other surrounding municipalities? Possibly, but this is ours right now. Councilman. Well, actually, I think this is counterproductive to what everybody apparently says at the table here, because if you want a full meal deal and not the piecemeal of the mandates for harm reduction, then I believe that's going to be better served by us having communications with PMH and harm reduction to make that happen and make those other aspects come to the community. Having a resolution like this basically stamps a seal of disapproval and we're not budging and we don't want any aspect of harm reduction or services here. It is also counterproductive and we have a chronic problem, a growing chronic problem in our community, and to continue to sit here and not advocate for supports and resources to come to our community, we're not being honest about the problem, because expecting everybody to go to a different community to get treatment, to get support, to get help, well, there's not enough treatment beds in the province of Manitoba to begin with, so if we're not open to having those treatment facilities here, then why should we be sending our affected, addicted people to another community. We don't, it's counterproductive to what's being said at the table. So I personally don't support this. I don't think this is moving us forward in the right direction. If anything, I think we need to be sitting down and actually having some of those discussions and seeing what resources and supports we can bring to the community because this is a problem and you can get rid of harm reduction, but it's not going to change the fact that we have a homeless addictions and housing crisis here. Further discussion? Um, so to continue on, um, harm reduction also gives out uh, STI supplies. Um, in their report, they said that STI um, and even HIV rates in our region or area are going up. Harm reduction to give out supplies, one-time use, is intended to reduce the rates. The rates are going up. Something's not calculating in my mind. Uh, it is not the town's responsibility to pick up needles at $1,500 per collection container. Whoever puts them out, to me, my, I personally, they should be the ones putting it in Canada or putting the collection containers out there. Why should the ratepayers have to be bearing the brunt? Um, I'm not going to stand idly by while our hardworking citizens of the community are held hostage um, to this issue. Okay. It should be harm reduction in PMH and the organizations that are putting this material out there that should be helping to clean it up. All we get is a lot of talk, a lot of not much action. So the purpose of this resolution is to make noise, make a statement that we are heard, and that we get attention and action from the departments of the province at the image. Okay. Uh, 
I'm just wondering where the funding for the proposed programming is going to come from. That council members. Again, that's something that we've always done to the standards. It's been inferred by some that uh, we have to continue to advocate and some of us, some councils may not care as much as they should, but I, I can guarantee you that all of us care. I can guarantee that. I can tell you in my case in Council Falls, I sat on the uh, 10 years plus uh, with the Safe House Committee, we actually ended up with some property given by the town, the town cared, and we were trying to make this happen. So we've always cared. We'll continue to care, but there's an inference out there, subtle, but nevertheless, that we don't care, and that concerns me. I sat on the Harm Committee for a year or two with Councillor Powell and I, when the person at the time came in through a dozen donuts, came late to the meeting, said, I have to go see my customers, and was gone. So I'm saying, this is working. I went to Staff Sergeant Henson, when he wasn't a Staff Sergeant, we went picking up needles all over areas of town. So we do do those things, and we do care. But it isn't working. I think there's something about a definition. We do something over and over at the same time and expect different results. I don't know what the appropriate term is anymore. Some would say at the time that that was called insanity. So it's not working. Anything further? Councilor Medwood. Uh, regarding funding for the we would come from provincial or federal levels, but having a bylaw or having a resolution passed that to this effect is not going to help us win any of that funding. It, this is completely contradicting any approach we might make. And we aren't actually advocating. I have yet to attend an AMM meeting where we would request a meeting with the minister that has to deal with mental health, homelessness, addictions, or any of those things to address those concerns with the minister. We have yet to do that. So as far as I'm concerned, no, we haven't been doing due diligence in advocating in this area. And we provide ashtrays at our public buildings for smokers. That's prohibited in public spaces, but we still pay and fund for ashtrays to be put out for smokers to put the bucks in, and they still end up on the ground. We also pay for garbage cans and recycling containers. So if we didn't have any of those things, we'd have a lot more cigarette butts, a lot more garbage, and a lot more recyclable containers all over the ground. So we haven't done our due diligence in the sense of either working with the province, working with PMH, or figuring out how we're going to get uh, sharps containers in the community so that there may actually be let more places to drop them off and fewer on the ground. So there is work that council can be doing to work with these organizations and to work with PMH and to work with the provincial government to get resources into our community and I don't feel we've done all of that yet. Well, that, that is your opinion of course and, and, and you have not been on council as long as some of the other people here have been that have spoke with various ministers on many of these topics in the past. Further discussion? All in favor? Or okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Nine point five. What is the CMHA one of our offices piloted a housing project for individuals who are unable to secure any level of housing supports? from any organization due to significant drug use and various other reasons by utilizing a local motel. And whereas said pilot program has ended with mixed public reviews and significant concerns by the town and its ratepayers, and whereas CMHA Swan River has recently attempted to secure housing to continue the housing project and a 55 plus medical housing unit within the town which was abandoned due to residential resident objections and public disapproval. And whereas CMHA Swan River continues to search for and secure the property within the town of Swan River to continue the housing project despite significant public concerns and not wishing such a facility be located in their neighborhood due to increased loitering, safety concerns, property damage, and potential criminal activity. Therefore, be a result, the town of Swan River communicate to CMHA, Swan River, and relevant provincial government departments that the town does not approve of such a housing facility and project within the town. 
moved by. We're not done. Oh, sorry. Right. Uh, sorry. And be it further resolved, the town of Swanover support efforts to establish such a housing project in a more appropriate jurisdiction and location. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councilor Bobbitt. Discussion. Go ahead. I'm also bringing this uh, motion forward uh, to a significant amount of public concern that I've been receiving over the last two months, and is specifically uh, within the last three weeks, um, ever since the uh, pilot project that uh, CMHA Swanner uh, had at the Timberland has come to an end. Um, and then with the apparent um, plan to house these individuals or create housing for them in the, uh, I believe it was the Rainbow Lodge, a 55 plus mile management housing authority uh, unit. Um, I don't disagree with them trying to find a, an appropriate housing project place location for them. I disagree with it that it means that it's in an urban area where they're still exposed to the issues and the conditions that led them down that path in the first place. Um, people that are in this uh, condition or at this time juncture in their life uh, have worked every bridge that's publicly available to them. That's why they're there. And God knows the province and the community has tons of opportunities for these individuals to get proper housing. Um, so I don't feel it's appropriate, again, for our citizens, especially 55 plus people in the latest example, um, to be uprooted and live in fear of um, this type of situation or this type of project uh, put in their neighborhood or their building. Um, I feel there's more appropriate jurisdictions and locations um, that the province has um, where a community uh, could be set up for them, uh, where proper housing is there, proper support, it all goes to them and not a hotel room where they're kicked out during the day and exposed to the um, conditions that put them in that lifestyle and situation to begin with and then go back to a hotel room. Uh, that's just stopgap stuff. But they need to look at a properly thought out plan and in a proper location. I'm not, I'm here to bring the concerns forward from the citizens uh, that the town of Swanner is not the proper place for it. Okay, further discussion? Uh, Councilor Paul. Okay, so I just have to ask, okay, where is, is there proof that this is, because I have talked to CMHA in regards to this, this securing this housing. Is there proof or some sort of, um, that we, that they had attempted to do this? with the 55 year or plus, I know there was lots of rumors, there was lots of talk, lots of people were talking about this, but I have spoken and that was not, that was not at all um, what I had heard, how this was supposed to come about. Um, I know that um, there was talks with Manitoba Housing, I think, but I'm not even going to say that that's confirmed because Think there, do, is there confirmed confirmation on that the CMHA was uh, was trying to do this? this Nothing besides months. the communications that's been out there like, from the people of the residents that were in the Rainbow Lodge that were advised that this is coming and some residents had to be removed. Okay. I, I will say that I spoke with Mr. Wickley on this item after I was actually phoned by some of the residents. Uh, and, and he had told me that it was something that was, if we're talking specifically to the 55 plus, I think that's what we're talking about in the resolution, um, that uh, he had said that there was nothing in communication with that, with them. That's what he had told me. Uh, I don't know about Manitoba Housing. I never spoke with anybody at Manitoba Housing. Uh, I know that the individual that did phone me felt that was, was actually told that um, this was happening for mental housing, but Mr. Wigley from uh, CMH told me that he was not aware of this. Uh, Councillor White, did you have something? Uh, Councillor Midland. Well, for one, 
the building question, Rainbow Lodge is owned by Manitoba Housing, and yet I do not see Manitoba Housing mentioned at all in this resolution, which means, to me, there's a lot of accusations against CMHA that are not confirmed, and therefore, by passing this, I feel we may be putting ourselves, or opening ourselves up to possible legal action. We are making false accusations that there is no concrete proof that this is, in fact, the acts of CMHA. There is absolutely zero mention of Manitoba Housing, who owns the building or the complex. And for us to pass a resolution without concrete facts is, again, goes against our strategic plan, those values of integrity, transparency, honesty, where are the facts to this? Because I also have heard that, one, it's Manitoba Housing that owns that building. It doesn't matter if CMHA talks to them. Manitoba Housing is the one that makes the decisions, not CMHA. And as for not having such resources available or housing projects available in our community, once again, we have a problem that exists in our community with homelessness and housing. And if we're not willing to address that and bring the resources to our community, all we're seeing is continued growth and chronic problem continuing to happen. It's not going away overnight. Conrad's was shut down, 100 plus instantly rendered homeless. The White House shut down along with a couple others, 30 plus instantly rendered homeless. And you wonder why people are in an uproar about people sleeping in the bank lobbies or setting up encampments. Well, if we don't address the housing needs, where do you expect them to live? Okay, for the discussion. Uh, yeah, okay, so um, housing and homelessness is very, is very dear to my heart. Um, it's been a project I've worked on for many, many, the last few years. Um, there is a problem in Swan River with housing and homelessness. Um, but we also have to say that the project that I have been involved with has housed many, many homeless people. Um, we worked to do that. Uh, the project we I worked on housed people who had addiction. And yes, we've had a, we've had a lot of people that have gone away for treatment. We don't have, we do, don't have the support to return back to this community, which makes it very difficult, very, very difficult. Um, but I don't think we, I think there's a lot of people that are trying to, and a lot of organizations that are trying to do a lot of great things. Um, but yet, I, I really think we have to, we have to look at it from the fact that we don't have the support here in Swan River, um, when they return back from from treatment, we spend a lot of money sending people to treatment. We don't have, we do not have those supports for when they return. And I know CMHA is trying everything they can to um, to support support that with their echo buildings. I know they're they're in discussion with maybe converting some of those to you know to so. There is, but um, I guess that's just what I want to say is that there is, you know, there. I know there is a huge issue. I, I haven't had a huge success rate of um, being able to um, put people into houses without them being evicted and stuff like that um, because there's nothing for when they come back for, from treatment, so. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. So then we shall move on. Was that a recorded vote, sir? Well, it was not. It wasn't asked. Okay. Too late? Yeah. Okay. Both done. Whereas Business View magazine is running ten page feature running ten page features on communities of several different population ranges on the need for federal funding, showing the infrastructure deficit in rural Canada. 
And whereas the town of Swan River has been selected in the population under 7,000 range and in exchange for a half page ad in their magazine shall provide an editorial consisting of community profile and focus on three projects where federal grant monies are needed most in our community. Therefore, be a result, the town of Swan River purchase a half page ad due upon publishing of the editorial in the amount of $2,900 USDA from Business View Magazine. Moved by Councillor Bob Bobbick, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor, go ahead. Um, after watching the last council meeting that I wasn't there, there were some questions asked regarding the value for dollars uh, that we spend um, and what did we get out of it and what is the legitimacy of this um, magazine? And, um, I think Mr. Poole has written that um, and then report to that as to what his findings and what communications he's had and stuff like that. And it does not appear that uh, it would be um, value for funds to be expended at this time due to the uh, lack of information forthcoming from the organizations that's trying to. Uh, solicit this article and add from us. Councilor White. ask uh, you know, Poole for his general comments. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> as stated in my report, uh, just unsuccessful finding the detailed information of their readership. They state 15,000 magazines distributed. It is clearly a United States based uh, magazine focused on a very broad industry sector from healthcare to aviation technology in general uh, and it's it does seem to be focused uh, feature uh, the features are focused uh, targeted at high level executives so $2,900 US dollars uh, I believe is a high price to pay I don't believe the I don't believe it's a scam however uh, the price is questioned Further discussion? Councillor Medley. When I looked into this, uh, when it was on the agenda the last time, I think the conversion at that time was about $4,000, and uh, hence my questions on the return on investment and what kind of value we And I would support the decision that there is not confirmation of return on investment. It also indicates in your report that this is not accounted for in our. 2024 budget, so we would be going over budget to uh, approve this. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. 11, 11.1. Result that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 31886 and number 3194, totaling $1,904,227.07. This listed on Schedule A. Checks number 31921 voided as was already paid by credit card. Check number 31977 was voided as invoice was paid previously. Payroll cost checks number 5478 and number 5481, totaling $120,505.67 since listed on Schedule B. Payroll cost checks number 5482 to number 5485, totaling $127,272.88 as listed on Schedule C. And direct deposit payments totaling $858.55 as listed on Schedule D. And direct deposit payments totaling $49,758.66 as listed on Schedule E. Moved by <coughs> Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Would it be possible for CFO Ganita to just send me his check explanation and I will let you know if there's any that I have highlighted here that are not in your explanation report because I've got more highlighted than not uh, for the uh, Schedule A. And uh, in Schedule D, the direct deposit one, 
I would like an explanation for August 26th, Canada Border Services Agency GST imports. What was that pertaining to? So is the directive for CFO needed to have an explanation for every single check in Schedule A? Uh, no, the directive is for him to just share his check explanation report that he does monthly anyways, uh, that he used to share with us but doesn't anymore. And if there's any in his check explanation report that currently exists that I, it does not account for some of my highlighted items, I will just follow up with CFO Ganita. I guess I just, I question how is, like, a, a, the pressure is on CFO Ganita. What if he misses one? Like, the. How is he supposed to know which ones are... He, he emails them to me before this meeting is even over, so I do know he has a check explanation report already ready. I'll compare it to the ones I have highlighted, and oh, if there's anything outstanding, then I'll just follow up with him and ask specifically for those ones. Very well. For the discussion, go ahead. Is this something that is done already? Did he have a check explanation already, or does he do it just specifically for... He, he may have it himself, but I don't, I don't require it because council doesn't, we've decided it's not a part of the agenda anymore. Go ahead. As far as I know, that wasn't a council decision because I certainly didn't vote on that. And he used to provide it monthly and I greatly appreciated it because it reduced the number of questions and explanations that I have or requested. We can strap all. Or we strap all. Whether CFO Ganita adds the, his check explanations to the agenda or not. We're doing this in a resolution? We're well, we could do that as a next cap. We could do that at a count meeting, but we're, this is on this resolution. Fair enough. Go ahead. Does CFO Ganita, do you have this already prepared already? Or is it something you go specifically and explain and, and send out? CFO Ganita. Yes, I have it already. Okay, so on the question, all in favor? Opposed? Abstain. Fair enough. It's carried. 11.2. Result of financial statements for the seven months ending July 31st, 2024 be adopted as received. Moved by Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.3 Result of the 2024 annual contribution to the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation Incorporated. Fund for the recruitment and retention of medical professionals calculated at $16 per capita and amounting to $64,784 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 12, 12.1. Oh, I missed one here. Uh, 11.4. Whereas uh, sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes, and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of an assessment of alterations for Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by Manitoba Assessment Services on August the 9th and 16th be made to the 2024 property and business tax rules with the resulting increases totaling $10,397.13 and the resulting reductions totaling $2,659.88. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 12, 12.1. Result of the bylaw 5, 2024, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to authorizing the payment of remuneration to members of council, be read a second time. Moved by 
Councillor Bobic, second by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Talk that at Memorial. I don't know if it's appropriate, but it's deja vu and I told you so. Mm. It's not appropriate. Next time, corrected. Anything further discussed? All in favor? It's carried. 12.2. Resolve the bylaw number 5, 2024, being a bylaw town of Swanderburg to authorizing the payment of remuneration to members of council be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? Okay. This is a recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. Result of bylaw number 15, 2024, being a bylaw town of Swan River to regulate the proceedings and con conduct of council and committees, therefore, be read a second time. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, I know you guys passed first reading at the last council meeting and then discussed it at the, the cow meeting that I wasn't at. But, uh, what was the rationale? For removing like all the uh, examples of the motions and and that that was read in the red line. Uh, this is for the procedures, right? Well, yes, yes, this is the procedures. It's to move the members. It was yeah. members privilege, and then the third meeting on Tuesdays. Yeah, I understand that. But the question is, is why was the why are we removing? All the sections that give us sort of a, a cheat sheet guide to like the uh, different types of motions and with motions precedes others like point of orders and. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like this privilege motions, intense motions, subsidiary privilege motions, recess, questions of privilege, incidental motions. Um, I know in your report it makes reference that. Uh, We've taken that out and just made the reference to following the Roberts Rules of Order. Um, but as you can see, that book is an inch and a half thick versus uh, two and a half pages here where it's a quick. Right. So the reasoning is, is when we did question our procedures, we always went back to Roberts Rules of Order. So we, we did ask other municipalities and they said, well, what do you fall back on? Roberts Rules of Orders? Make that the way. So that was the reasoning. So we, ha if we have it in our procedures bylaw, we shouldn't be falling back on Robert's rules of orders. If we follow Robert's rules of orders, follow on Robert's rules of order. That was that was the thinking on that. Okay, I'll find my work around. <laughs> Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 12.4, resolve the bylaw number 15, 2024, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to regulate the proceedings and conduct of council and the committees thereof be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councilor Bobbitt, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved the pursuance of sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act Council go to committee and close the meeting to the public. Items will be discussed will be the uh, HR and service to senior requests. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. All in favor? Let's carry on camera. We were just on camera and um, items arising out of uh, camera. Resolution for 16.1 resolved that the request from the Swan River Resource Council in regards to waiving unpaid tax penalties on property number or property roll number 134803 uh, decimal triple zero be approved. Moved by 
Councilor Balbic, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. All in favor? Um, did we get to discussion? Go oh, ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. My okay. mistake. Go ahead. Um, I absolutely agree that policies, procedures need to be followed, but at the same time, I think there are extenuating circumstances that come up from time to time, and as a council, I think we need to be open to being compassionate towards those at times, and sometimes exceptions can and should be made. Thank you for the discussion. Go ahead. Um, like I said, we can make exceptions, and yes, I feel or I guess I feel bad, but we make these exceptions, we're going to be having multiple, multiple people come to us with their exceptions. And then I just... Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Can read the resolution again, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the resolution reads, resolved the request from the Swan River Resource Council in regard to waiving unpaid property penalties on property rule 134803 decimal triple zero be approved. Moved by, I think it was, Councillor Albic, seconded by Boychuk. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. Members privilege, Councilor Bobbitt. Uh, not much to speak of. Just a friendly reminder to the cemetery committee. I think we need to be looking at an attendant for that cemetery just to we get on there and we get time to have a meeting. Uh, just uh, on the septic system and the letter of support, I was hoping that letter would uh, also go to the minister's office. Ooh, we should send it to the person who requested yeah, it. Yeah, because they can send it to the, the homeowner. They can send it to the minister. Okay. Councilor okay. Boyshaw. Um, I'm just kind of being that we had the accommodation tax on the agenda again today, and unfortunately we weren't able to uh, get to that. Um, I can't help but notice that uh, this weekend with the arena here, it brought a lot of people to our community over the weekend with the youth camp as well as the stamps uh, main camp. And uh, I believe that would be a part of tourism to our community coming here for this uh, sport and, and this team. And I can tell you undoubtedly that there were a lot of heads in beds over the weekend and many more weekends throughout the year. Uh, also saw some Airbnbs posting about hosting hockey players as well. So it seems like everyone in the community was full up due to um, the provision of this recreation activity in our community. So just something that I, I thought might be an interesting thing to uh, bring up. Uh, as well, I want to commend the Recreation Department for uh, all the initiatives and especially the community people that have come out to support different initiatives within our community. Uh, you've got uh, the Bordian Family uh, Cement Works or Bordian Construction with the volleyball court. Uh, we've got the play structures up at the uh, arena now. It looks wonderful in there. Um, uh, for the Pennier, was it? Uh, with the disc golf course, like what an amazing world move. What an amazing thing for our community, as well as Swan Valley Community Set Care with the, the lighting for the Legion Park. Like, these are the initiatives and the things that if we want to keep our community growing and in a positive way, we do need that help from the community uh, individuals that are out there and are very appreciative of it. And I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be using these uh, new recreation, I guess, facilities and uh, enjoying that lighting down at the Legion. So thank you to all of those involved in all of those things. Very appreciated. Happy Memorial. 
Nothing extra from me. I said enough to make time. Uh, Councilor Powell. Mm, I guess just a couple things. Um, uh, the library is going to be taking on the October Fest. The library and the board is going to be looking after that this year. Um, Bob Jean and Bev have our spearheading this, and so that's kind of like a fundraiser that they're doing for the library. Um, I guess the other thing is is that um, the French Center now has the lines all painted for both pickleball and tennis, um, and the basketball line should be painted very shortly too. So that should be up, and that'll be there's lots of uh, there's lots of um, stuff to either use. We got nets, and we got um, all of the balls and kind of rackets and everything like that at the French Center. So. That'll be, and that's a community. That's a, this is for the community. Right? Anybody, Everybody can use it. Cool. Councilor White. Just briefly, uh, I think that meeting with Dr. Chesley uh, opened our eyes a, a lot, uh, refocused. You know, I, th I think we can, we have some good ideas. And what excites me is maybe going after those people from the north again, the doctors are practicing in real, real rural Manitoba. So, That'll be discussed at length uh, tomorrow night. And the possibility of giving monies to doctors, graduate, help me if I'm wrong here, David, graduate doctors who aren't, aren't Manitobans, aren't Canadians, maybe, to maybe sweeten the pot a little with them, too. Councilman Edward? Um, nothing much. I think we're just going to continue to I guess reiterate some of what's already been said, but the Swan Valley Communities of Care has provided financial contribution to the rec locker to allow for the free borrowing of equipment. They also contributed to the beach volleyball court, the supplies and sporting equipment at the Friendship Center that Councilor Powell mentioned. They also financially contributed to lighting in the Legion Park, and I think the library board with Donna Jean is going to do a great job at Spooktoberfest because she used to be on Swan Valley Communities that care for the longest time, so she is probably familiar with how it was all run from conception to what they're currently doing, and I think that will be a great continuation for Spooktoberfest. Okay. For me, not, not much really to say other than uh, it was great to see the Bombers sneak, sneak out and win against the Riders on uh, mm -hmm. on Sunday, and uh, Banjo Bowls coming up on Saturday, and and after a big holiday that we had down in the states and visiting um, the state fair down there and watching some baseball, we brought my daughter back to Winnipeg, and she starts. Her first course is the university tomorrow morning. Did you cry when you left her? I don't know. You did. <laughs> I did. Not leaving your daughter, leaving her. Anyway, yeah, it was all good. She's, she's getting it all figured out. Just a little bit of transition. Result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 9.56 p.m. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Dr. Mario. Favor. It's carried. We are adjourned.